Hey guys, it's Matt Pittman with Meat Church. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make ribs on a mill scale 94 gallon smoker. Let's get into making these ribs. We've got some prairie fresh St. Louis cut spare ribs, beautifully marbled, great looking rib. First thing we're gonna do is peel the membrane off the back. Easily done with a paper towel. You wanna get this membrane off here uh, so that the seasoning can penetrate into the meat. And also, if you leave the membrane on, it leaves, gives you a really unpleasant bite when you eat the ribs. So just kinda of grab the membrane. And if you get lucky while shooting a video, you get it in one pull. How about that? Never happens. I've actually already pulled it on these other racks. I'm gonna fire up the smoker. We're gonna make it worthwhile. And we're gonna make four racks. And these, look at these ribs. Look how thick those are. Amazing. Gorgeous looking prairie fresh ribs. So these are cut down to a, a St. Louis cut, which is what a competition guy would do in competition. So that's what I'm most familiar with. Uh, we're going to show you kind of a take on a competition recipe, but this isn't going to be too crazy. This is a great backyard recipe. All right. I'm going to start with just a touch of our fajita. This is optional. This is a little trick of mine. So real nice and light. It's kind of salty, so don't go too heavy. Really, really light. We'll do the same thing on the other side in a minute. All right, but the star of the show here is gonna be our honey hog hot, which is our honey hog jalapeno. It's not too hot, don't be worried. It cooks down. This is a really fine rub, and we're gonna apply this one pretty heavily. Now, you wanna allow yourself about 15 minutes for this to adhere up to about 30. People always ask me, can I prep in advance? Yeah, you can, but don't season these the night before. The seasoning will pull the moisture out of meat, and I can tell you the best rib cooks in the world will season within the hour before they cook. It's a little windy here, so we gotta play the slice. This might look like a lot, but trust me, it's not. Like I said, give yourself about 15 minutes. Let this adhere. Since we're making a video, I'm gonna kinda of cheat it. I'm gonna pat this in, and we're gonna flip and go to the other side, and we are gonna allow that to sit. You can use a binder if you want. So what's a binder? Maybe squirt some yellow mustard on here to help the seasoning adhere if you like. I don't think it's necessary though, uh, because this is just a two-sided piece of meat, and as long as I had 20, 30 minutes, I wouldn't need a binder. All right, let's flip these over. I'm not gonna lose too much. Over to the meat side. All right, one more time with my light application. And yeah, I'm doing this barehanded. We're making a cooking video. We don't need these bottles after we're done. Light application. Again, this is optional. And you can make this your own. Use your favorite, um, your favorite seasonings. Make your own seasoning. I make my own seasoning too. But now I'll put them in a bottle and offer them to you. Now it's time for Holy Gospel. This is what landed us a final in a world championship, Memphis in May, on baby back ribs two years ago. It's a proven winner on ribs. That's what we're putting on the meat side and we're going liberal on it just like we did on the bone side. And we are gonna let this adhere for 15, 20 minutes. And these things are gonna be nice and wet when it's adhered. And when that happens, it's gonna be time to put them on the offset. All right, that looks pretty even. I'm gonna call that good. I'm gonna let these sit. We're gonna come back. Like I said, in about 15, 20 minutes, these should be nice and wet, and it's gonna be time to get to cooking. All right, it's been about 15 minutes or so, and as you can see, these are wet. The seasoning is nice and adhered, so it's time to cook. So I've got a 250 degree fire running here on the mill scale. And I'm gonna put a water pan in. This is optional. This is actually apple juice. I'm gonna put it right here on top of the diffuser. So that adds some moisture in your cook chamber if you want. 
We're running a post oak fire because we're in Texas. Uh, I also love hickory or pecan, maybe even a little cherry for a rib cook. And you can run this cook 250 to 275 degrees. My recipes on meatchurch.com are 275. You get a great rib that way. So don't be too hung up in 250, 275. The lower you cook, the more time you're gonna need clearly. The hotter you cook, you gotta pay a little more attention to it because things can get away from you. But you can make a great rib at either of those temperatures. So go with whatever temp you like. Now this first stage of the cook is gonna take about two and a half hours. We're trying to build a beautiful color before we wrap these. So we'll come back and check on these here in a little while and see how they're doing. While these ribs are cooking, I wanna show y'all something. This pit is running right at 250 degrees, but I want you to take a look at the stack and the smoke. Thin blue smoke, nothing thick and white. That is a clean fire, and that's a key to good barbecue. All right, guys, these ribs have been cooking for about two hours. Let's check in on them. Ooh, look at that beautiful mahogany color. I'm gonna hit these with an apple cider vinegar spritz. Keep them nice and moist. And this is a hog sprayer for those of you that are gonna ask me. Cause well, we're cooking hog. These will probably go another 30 minutes and it's gonna be time to wrap. So I'll see you on a few minutes. Okay, it's been about two and a half hours. These ribs are looking perfect. It's time to wrap. These look great. All right, you wrap for two reasons. You've achieved this perfect, beautiful mahogany color. You know, cooking's about visual cues. That's what you're looking for. I don't care about the temperature. I want them to look beautiful. And we're gonna wrap in two pieces of heavy duty aluminum foil. Now again, this recipe is gonna be kind of a take on a comp recipe. I'm looking for a sweet heat. But we're gonna put some pats of a really good butter. We're gonna go with about five pats of butter on here. and just a small handful of brown sugar. Now, if this competition, we'd put a ton in here. We're not doing that. We're just trying to accent these, and this is a big hit, I promise. Now we're gonna add a bead of apple cherry habanero Texas pepper jelly. We're also gonna put this in our sauce at the end. Now, if you don't have this, that's fine. Don't sweat it. You don't have to do this. Um, I often will put in an actual pepper jelly in mind, some people put a hot sauce. Um, you know, you probably see lots of mixtures like this. Some people use honey, this is what I do. I'm gonna take these pretty ribs and I'm gonna lay them straight down in that. Again, if this were comp, we'd do a lot more. We'd probably put all that on top of this. We don't need that much. I'm just trying to go with a little subtle, sweet heat here. So two pieces foil, this is heavy duty because you don't want that grate to rip it open. Get them wrapped up real nice and tight. And I'm gonna put these back on the offset, meat down so they're swimming in that goodness. And I'm gonna do that for all these. And then we're gonna cook these until the bones start poking out. So it's probably, you know, another two, two and a half hours or so, depending on the size of your ribs. So I'm gonna finish these, get them on the pit, and we'll see you on a little bit. All right, guys, these ribs have been cooking wrapped in the foil for just over two hours. I've been running this fire consistent 275 degrees. So if you're running anything lower, it might take a little bit longer. But again, we're looking for visual cues. How do we know these ribs are done? Well, you're looking for the bones to be popping out about a quarter inch, just like that. Those are perfect. Look at that. Pretty, pretty. So any chance I get to keep my pit clean, I'm gonna take it. So I'm gonna sauce these ribs, but I'm gonna make myself a little foil boat here so I can put this boat back in the offset uh, with the sauce on the ribs and not make a huge mess. 
my dog's out here because she knows what's up. So I've got a barbecue sauce sitting on the diffuser plate that I made. I'm actually using a friend's sauce, Meet Mitch's Womp Sauce, which I've cut two to one, two parts Womp to one part of the same apple cherry hob uh, that we put in the wrap. So it thins the sauce out just a little bit, but use your favorite sauce if you choose to sauce. I'm gonna use this big fancy Thermaworks uh, silicone brush here to paint these. I want these ribs to look like a show car. And then we're gonna put this boat back in the offset for about 10 minutes just to tack up this sauce. Cause I don't want somebody to take a bite of these ribs and sauce just run down their face. You see this, this sauce, the consistency of it, it's nice and thin, so it's gonna kinda run down, make a beautiful sheen. And we're gonna put these right back in. I'm gonna do that for all four racks. 10 minutes later, we're gonna pull them out and show you what they look like. Look out, Dolly. All right, y'all, these ribs were on the pit for about 10 minutes to let the sauce tack up and look at them. Like I said, sexy as a show car. I can't wait any longer. I've been wanting to use this knife for a really, really long time. Well, here we go. Bam. Look at that. Look at that smoke. Sexy, sexy. All right, here we go. Looks like the meteor side. Okay, that's perfect. That's what you want, you wanna see the bite through. I don't like them fall off the bone. That's overcooked to me. This is perfect where you can see the teeth marks. Man, that's good, that sweet heat. The Holy Gospel, amazing rib rub. Um, but I love how it's accented by the womp sauce with a little um, of the pepper jelly here that we use. Got a nice little, it's not too hot or anything. You just take a couple chews and you can kind of feel the sizzle and it's awesome. Man, these are great. I couldn't be more pleased with the performance of the mill scale today. Hope you guys try this recipe. We're just trying to inspire you to get outside and cook something. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you guys for watching. See you all next week.